there's an extreme exposure risk because even though it's wood just like you'd have burning in a campfire it still contains a lot of carcinogens and those carcinogens get absorbed by the body either through dermal exposure through the skin or possibly through respiratory inhalation of the smoke and once that's introduced into the body we don't know exactly how soon or what the net effect could be but research by NIST and some other groups has shown that that exposure does result in a much higher percentage incidence of cancer with our firefighters today. This day and age, one of the most common things we're seeing with firefighters is cancer. Uh, rates of cancer have, have gone through the roof, uh, mostly due to the kinds of fires that we're being called to, uh, or the, uh, more specifically, the kinds of material that's burning at those fires. Uh, my name is Matt Ron. I am the uh, Director for Research and Education for Wildland Firefighting and Environmental Programs with uh, Cal State San Marcos. Uh, the first grant we received from FEMA had to do with uh, smoke exposure. Uh, the question we had working with these firefighters for so many years is we would be out on an incident uh, standing there in the smoke uh, and it's you know te technically a wildland fire but 200 feet away there's a home burning and maybe there's a, a car in that garage and all the chemicals and things that are in that uh, built environment uh, and standing there 200 feet away there's there's no respiratory protection there's no SCBAs that these firefighters are wearing and they're working in this you know heavy smoke and inversion for 24-hour shifts uh, and I, you know, I asked a very simple question at that time, which was, uh, what, are, what are we breathing right now? Um, definitely can't be good. In a structural firefighting situation, we're actually exposed to smoke that contains byproducts of hydrocarbons, and that combined with the smoke from the wood can create a synergistic effect and really result in some potential health hazards that we're just now starting to understand the full ramifications of. What we found out uh, during the first FEMA uh, grant was that our wildland firefighters are being exposed to some of the harshest conditions imaginable on the planet. Um, and they're doing a heck of a job out there protecting our communities, but they're also putting themselves at serious risk because the things that are in that smoke are a significant uh, health hazard. I'm hearing everything from 20% to 60% higher incidence of cancer for the firefighters that are actually exposed to smoke in a wildland situation or potentially in a structural firefighting situation. So I think that's the, the biggest problem uh, facing us right now is being able to make the link between what the firefighters are being exposed to and the kinds of uh, conditions that they, they see uh, later in their career, including cancers. There's, there's a desperate need for information on the skin exposure from the firefighters. Uh, you know, wildland firefighters, unlike the structure or high-rise or urban folks, uh, will spend days, uh, weeks, and even months out on an in incident. The wildland folks will wear that same gear, sometimes not, you know, wash it or keep it uh, all that clean for days on end. Um, and, uh, you know, the skin, of course, is that, that massive, uh, you know, organ on your body that absorbs uh, everything out of the environment. Some of the data that the actuaries has put together has shown that the typical life expectancy for a firefighter after retirement age of 50 to 55 is five years or less. So while we do earn a, a great pension, not, not everybody gets to enjoy that into their golden years. But so many things, you know, contaminate our environment on a regular basis that it's very difficult to, you know, go back and point to a, a single incident or a particular exposure and say that's what caused that cancer for that firefighter when they turned 62. So our challenge now is first and foremost understanding what the firefighters are being exposed to. Um, so that maybe we can hopefully identify some protocols and uh, personal protective equipment and other things that will protect the firefighters from this exposure. The firefighters, no matter where they're at in this country, are on the front lines of trying to do good for the people of this country. The message I would send to uh, wildland firefighters is very simple. Uh, I think collectively a lot of us that do this research would agree that um, the wildland firefighting industry as a whole is easily a generation behind that of structure and high-rise. 
uh, it's, it's in your hands as a firefighter uh, to, uh, to change that. What we really need to focus on is the, the firefighter's career, starting at day one, being able to understand what that uh, individual, uh, uh, their baseline health is, and then tracking them throughout their entire career uh, to see what the uh, uh, exposures might be and how those are directly related to uh, the types of uh, ailments they have later in life.